This one was my uh, single cylinder slide valve engine that uh, was a great success uh, and surprised me because it was so nice and free, although it had an enormous fly flywheel, nice and free and it would uh, run by blowing into it. You see, and I haven't got a hell of a lot of puff left, but anyway. But the great thing, it was very successful, but only having one cylinder. It was not self-starting. Well, it would start if it stopped somewhere like that, but if it was at the end of the stroke or the beginning of a stroke, no, it wouldn't self-start. But if you did a, a twin-cylinder engine with the cranks set up about 90 degrees to each other, then it would self-start. So that's what I did for this. And this is not finished, and uh, I did a little uh, video because I was having huge problems making a crankshaft, and I knew if I couldn't make a crankshaft, I couldn't make the engine. Well, I got finally I got the crankshaft done, and here it is, and you'll see it in a little bit greater detail. Um, but, um, now, with two cylinders, I hope that uh, it will, uh, if I haven't made any design errors, um, self-start, run in either directions. It has basically the same uh, uh, valve gear. And uh, anyway, if, if it works, um, there'll be another video. But if uh, th for the rest of this, I'm going to try to fill this in with a little bit more and follow it up with uh, a, um, a video of some of the machining for the, uh, the valve gear, the cylinders, and as, as I say later, I haven't yet made my mind up whether to do the cylinders in a single block together or two separate ones. But anyway, uh, I'll fool around with it as I go, and hopefully, uh, after a bit more work, I'll wind up with a nice self-starting reversible uh, twin cylinder steam engine. So, as I wished before, yeah, wish me luck. Well, thank you very much. Here's the bottom half of my new but highly unfinished twin cylinder uh, slide valve engine. And uh, you saw my video showing the problems, <laughs> by God, problems I had making a twin cylinder crankshaft that was truly concentric. Well, I, I did it, I got it at last. And uh, now it's incorporated in the finished bottom half uh, of this engine. And uh, let me show you some of the sort of notable things. Here are the, actually, the piston rods, the connecting rods. And, uh, of course, they had to have little tiny uh, 080 uh, cap screws to clamp. The, the, the end of the rod is in two pieces and it clamps on the bushing, uh, phosphor runs bearing bush, which uh, you already saw that I had to put on uh, before I pressed the crankshaft pieces together. So, uh, anyway, that's that part. These long bits are the push rods for the slider valves for the uh, valving. And this is basically, as you can see, the reversing gear. Now, let me go a little closer here. And you can see that the actual let me get this here. The actual slider blocks are, they can't pull out because of this, these little recesses I made in the guides. Uh, I cut that with a tiny little Woodruff key seat cutter. It was only uh, a quarter inch diameter and uh, a sixteenth thick but uh, just right for cutting this little slot. 
and uh, of course that way that that block can't come out that way and uh, it's um it's more secure but everything is very free and uh, now i have a few i've got to pull it back again uh, i'll show you the top half here we go there that's a bit better and uh, as you can see this column is different because it has to carry it, it has a through hole and threaded rod which is why you've got nuts in on top of here instead of these cap screws and that's because it had to have this little machined in bit which is the fulcrum for the reversing gear linkage which will connect to that and will provide the reversing so uh, but let's bring it back here and this is my next decision I haven't decided yet obviously you can see the cylinders uh, mount here and I've, I have to decide whether to make the cylinder block for both cylinders in one solid piece the advantage will be for the exhaust port they can share the same exhaust port uh, the disadvantage might be lining up everything because the, the, the solid bit will be uh, fixed just as much as this is fixed and uh, I guess it'd be alright as long as I've done everything absolutely accurately but uh, it looks good but uh, if I made it in two pieces I would have room for individual uh, slight adjustments so uh, I haven't quite yet decided. Probably I'll, I'll do it both ways and see which. Well, I'll do it with a solid one first, and then uh, if that doesn't work, I'll make two separate ones. So that's me all over. What, what the hell? But anyway, that's as far as it's got, and so far it's looking good. And I will be doing uh, a few more videos. There was so much work here that I couldn't bother to. Uh, do the machining uh, videos of the machining but uh, since there is some pretty uh, fancy and necessarily accurate stuff coming uh, on these the, the actual cylinder blocks and uh, the valve gear I'll, I'll show you some of the machining on that and as we encounter problems uh, that'll probably make it a bit more interesting but uh, Anyway, that's as far as it's got. It's got a nice small flywheel this time, not that huge one on the single cylinder. And incidentally, this is a smaller engine. Um, this is only uh, 0.6 inches stroke and half an inch bore. And uh, where the, the larger engine was uh, 5 eighths bore, and I forget the stroke, but it was about the same uh, general uh, proportion. Anyway, that's it, and again, as you can see, it's nice, nice and uh, free, so I'm hoping that uh, when I put it together, if I haven't made any other great big mistakes, it's going to run. And uh, anyway, I'll keep my fingers crossed and uh, wish me luck as always. Thank you very much.